Hello everyone, it's Laura and welcome back to Crafty Not Shifty. Today I am guest designing for Rainier Foil Paper and I'm really excited to be able to share this product with you. This is a new to me product, so I first found this product when I was at Creativation and I have a video that I'll link in the description below of a, um, a booth tour that shows you all about this product. But I'll dive right in and I'll give you a quick overview now. So I've got a couple of different packs here. As you can see, it comes in the variety packs and also the um, solid color packs where you just get the same color th through the uh, the different sheets. It comes in two different sizes. I really like this smaller size here, the artist size. This smaller size is I believe 6x4 and the larger ones are actually 6x12. So you get these two different types of the foiled paper. There are the, um, I believe it's Starburst, and it's this kind of textured pattern with the stars. You get two each of those sheets, and then you also get the smooth foil as well. As you can see with the textured pieces, they are the same colour on the front and the back, and then for all of the smooth pieces, they're actually gold on the back. And that comes into play a little bit later on with an ink that I'm going to be using. Okay, so I'm going to take these pieces here and just show you something that this can do. Look at this, so you can curl this foiled paper and it will actually hold its shape. So it's actually um, two pieces of foil with a piece of paper kind of sandwiched in the middle. So you've got all of that shine and the good stuff of having foil, but then you've also got that sturdiness and the ability to hold a shape. So because this is paper on the inside, you can actually die cut this. So you can't actually do that with regular kind of foil that you would use with um, like toner sheets or something like that. But because this has got paper inside, you can actually go ahead and die cut this. So I just have my big shot here and it's on the same settings that I would use for die cutting paper if I had like a stamped image or anything like that. And I'm just using regular dies and running that through and as you can see it cuts beautifully. For this particular card I decided to use the um, Starburst, I hope I'm getting that name right, <laughs> I'll have a link in the description below in case it's wrong. And um, this means that it's the same colour on both sides and I decided that I would be able to use that to create some really nice 3D like dimensional flowers. And because this is the same colour on each side, I'm actually going to go ahead and take, um, this is actually just a gel pen, and I'm just gently curving each of those leaves. And because this will hold its shape, it's going to create a really nice dimensional piece on my card. So I'm just going to go around each of those leaves and add that dimension. Really easy, just curling it over this pencil here. And um, as that curls up, it continues to have that pink colour. So I'm just kind of layering these on top of each other, seeing how I'm going to want them. And I think I actually did go ahead and cut a couple extra. I think I'd cut three originally and I think I ended up using four of these. So I think I cut the, um, the middle size twice. And as I'm layering each of these one on top of the other, I'm actually just offsetting them slightly so those leaves kind of fall exactly where I want them. So I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue um, to stick this in place. It just works just with regular adhesive, you don't need anything special. And I think that's the really great thing with this. So foil I think can be a little bit intimidating because um, most of the time you need to use like a laminator or a mink foil machine. But this paper is already foiled so it's really easy to use. Everybody knows how to use paper so it's a really familiar medium and it's nice and simple to use. For the centre of my flower here, I actually just um, crinkled up the, um, you know, like the negative space around the areas that I die cut, and I just use that to create like a rough ball, and then just um, go ahead and glue that in the centre. So I'm going to set that to one side to dry, and then I'll bring in my card base and start working on that. So I've just got the flower kind of laid down in the bottom left hand corner of this card and I'm just lining my card base up on my grid mat here and I've got my sentiment stamp. This is a um, like a large scripty, I think it's the big scripty sentiments from Simon Says Stamp and I've just placed that kind of where I'm going to want it on the card and then I'm just using some frog tape to mask off a section. I'm actually going to use some distress ink to blend a coloured section on this card base here. So I've got my two different colours of Distress Ink. I believe I've got Worn Lipstick, and I can't remember what that small one is there, perhaps it's um, Candied Apple. So I'm just using the Mini Ink Blending Tool just to um, get a nice even blend of those two colours across that section. And then I'll just wipe up this mat, well I say a mat, this is actually a DIY, this is just a laminated piece of cardstock. I like that for quick and easy cleanup, and the colours are true to colour when you kind of press them down for different techniques on that. 
So here I've got my sentiment and I've just inked that up with my Versafine Onyx Black and stamped that down and then I'm just edging this piece with some black peel-offs. I think it's a really nice way to kind of add a nice simple frame to this piece just to kind of make that coloured section pop. And I'm just pressing those down in place and then trimming off any of the excess. So now it's time to bring back in the flower. I'm not too sure what type of flower this is. I am hopeless with the names of flowers. So um, if anyone knows, let me know. But um, I think it's a really pretty flower shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some leaves. And I'm just using my tape runner here to kind of glue two of them together that I'll use in the bottom corner. And then another two, I'll apply a little bit of adhesive on each of them, press them together so I've got the shape that I want. And then just kind of place those down on my card base where I'm going to want them. And again, this type of adhesive works really well with this paper. I'm applying some lines of adhesive where the flower will be and then just pressing that down. And that is it. It is so quick and easy to be able to create such stunning dimension and some awesome foil. I mean you can see the way it catches the light in this video here. I think it's just beautiful and it is so simple to work with. So moving on to my next card, I've got the coordinating stamps that go with those same set of dies and I'm actually using this product here from Rainier. This is their Ghost Ink and this is an ink that's been formulated to work especially with their paper and I'll show you what it does here. It's got some really cool effects. So I'm just using my Misty to stamp everything down. I'm actually going to stamp twice for the leaves. So I knew I was going to want a couple more than I had here so I just flipped my foil around and then I'm just going to press those stamps down again. I actually let this ink dry completely, um, I did that naturally. I believe you can also heat set this, but you do have to be careful not to let the foil paper get too hot, otherwise it will kind of burst and bubble and you'll separate the foil from the paper. So I grabbed some regular rubbing alcohol here and just a rag and how cool is that? You can see what's happening already. So you just want to use a small amount of the rubbing alcohol on an old rag or an old cloth and you just gently rub at the foil and it will remove the colour from the top and take it back to silver. And I just, I think that's amazing. I, I don't know how it works, um, but something to do with the formulation of the ink. You then heat set it or let it dry and then rub it with some rubbing alcohol. You do want to be gentle with this because um, the rubbing alcohol on its own can actually start to remove the colour from the foil without the use of the ghost ink. But the ghost ink just helps to kind of target exactly where you want the foil um, to remove from. I hope that makes sense. So you'll see here as I'm rubbing over the flowers, because it is more concentrated in the centre, you'll see that I actually rub away almost all of the colour just in those centre sections. So you can remove the colour with just the alcohol, but that ghost ink really helps to target where the removal comes from. So it kind of helps those parts to, to kind of move away first, if that makes sense. So you can end up with the detail of your design, such as these flowers and the leaves. This technique will work with any of the colours and will always remove back to silver. So if you have a silver foil, obviously this technique won't work because you can't take the silver back to silver because you're already there. Um, but for any of these pieces, it should work. I felt that it showed up best on the darker and the smooth um, pieces of foil. But because you get different textures in the um, in the variety packs, you can also you know give it a try if you decide to pick up one of those. I feel like now is a really good time to introduce the fact that as the guest designer this month I do have a giveaway and I'll have a link to that. There are multiple different ways that you can um, enter that giveaway and you can receive a $25 gift certificate to the Rainier website. I'll have everything linked in the description below and I'll include details of when the um, giveaway closes and when I'll draw the winner. So here I'm just lining up my dies. These are the same ones that I used on the previous card and I'm just lining those up over the stamp sections and just using some sticky tape to hold those in place. And I ran both the flowers and the leaves through my die cut machine. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and arrange these on a card base. This card is four and a quarter by five and a half. If I didn't mention previously, the first card was as well. And um, they are just um, standard letter size cardstock cut in half and folded in half. So again, I'm using another stamp from the Big Scripty Greetings Sentiment stamp set, and I'm just arranging everything and kind of deciding exactly where I want that stamp to go. And um, this is something I like to do when I'm not too sure of my card design, just to make sure that when I stamp my sentiment down, particularly on, on a one layer card, I'm not kind of ruining anything and I can be sure of my placement before I go ahead and stamp down. So I just kind of arranged everything how I thought I was going to want it, and I actually went ahead and took a photograph of this before I did my stamping. 
So again, I'm using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This is my kind of go-to favourite ink for any sentiment stamping, just because I like the really crisp black impression that it gives you just on your first stamp. If you are kind of worried about getting a good impression, you can always use a stamping positioning tool to help you do multiple stamping. So now I'm going to go ahead and stick down each of these pieces. Again, I'm just using my tape runner. I, I can't stress enough how easy it is to work with this product. It's just like working with paper. It just happens to be foiled and it happens to have that really great added effect of being able to add the dimension by curling the edges. I was looking at the Rainier website and looking at some of the design team um, kind of products that they've created and there are some really great ideas so do make sure you check that out. There are some um, awesome 3D projects, there's actually some jewellery that's created with these pieces as well so the, the possibilities are endless and I'm really excited to see what people start to create with this as the awareness grows for this product. So as you may have noticed, I have sped the video up here and that's just because I'm just doing basic kind of sticking things down. Some of the flowers I'm using some foam squares, some of them I'm sticking straight to the back of the card. And then when I had everything stuck down, I just trimmed off the edges. And I actually decided to use those off cuts just to add um, a little bit of extra detail over on the right hand side, which is a really great way to add something else without having to stamp anything else at all. I did add some gems when I was finished with this, but essentially that is the card finished. Okay, so on to the next card, and for this one I wanted to use some die cut butterflies. One of the first things that I thought of and that I wanted to do when I saw this paper was to create some butterflies. I like to use butterflies on my card and use kind of foam squares or maybe just glue down the body to try and add some lift to the wings, but obviously with this particular product you can just curl them up and they will stay there. So I wanted to make this kind of a butterfly crazy card so I die cut a whole bunch and then I have these vellum cards that I've arranged in a cluster in the center and just stuck those down and then over the top of that I'm going to add this dream sentiment that I'm sticking down using a liquid glue pen. So I'm just applying small dots of glue all over the back of this and I've just sped that up and then I use my tweezers to pick that up and stick it on the top of those clouds. I'm just using here a stamp block to weigh that down. Once that was dry, I picked up all of my butterflies and I just started placing those down around all the different, um, kind of around those clouds, just framing it up. I made sure that they kind of hung off the edge and I will go ahead and trim those edges closer to the end when I'm finished. To curl the butterfly wings and give it that awesome height and dimension and kind of movement across the card, I rolled some of them around a pencil and kind of just fiddled with them with my hands until I was exactly happy with how they looked. I then decided to go a little bit Nouveau crazy, so I've sped this up. I'm using two different colours of Nudo Nouveau drops and adding a whole bunch of drops all over this card in the pink and the blue. And I really like how this looked. I think it would be a nice clean and simple card if you stripped it back, but I like um, I like the bright colours on it. I did trim off any of the extra um, excess that hung off the side, and that is that card finished. Okay, so onto this one, I've cut down a piece of the chocolate, I'm going to call it chocolate, I don't think that's its official colour, but you'll see why I'm calling that in, in, that in just a moment, but this brown smooth piece here, I'm adding this into my embossing folder and just running that through exactly the same as I would a piece of paper, and then it has this really awesome texture to it. I thought that this texture looked like a chocolate bar, and that's what I decided I was going to make. So I trimmed this piece down just using my paper trimmer and I realised that I actually wanted the um, the pattern C, I wanted to kind of tip it on its side because I felt that that looked a little bit more like a chocolate bar. So that first piece I'm going to keep for another project and then this off cut here is where I'm going to actually cut my chocolate bar. I just think it looks great. I think those little um, kind of the impressions from the embossing folder, it just looks like a bar of chocolate and then this scallop circle punch is perfect for creating that bite mark out of the corner. And I know some people that might stress them out because nobody takes a giant bite out of a chocolate bar like that, you eat it piece by piece, but if it's your favourite chocolate bar you might. So I've got some paper from, I believe this is Doodlebug here, and I've got a smaller card, I think I ended up using a 4x4 piece here, and um, I'm just going to cover that with the Doodlebug paper, and then I'm deciding which stickers that I'm going to use to coordinate. So I have those little kind of chocolate kisses there, and then these coffee cups, and um, I think that's just perfect. Coffee and chocolate, what could be better? 
So I'm just adding those together and somehow I managed to miss me gluing down my chocolate piece. So apologies for that. I'm not sure how I, how I managed to miss that, but I just used some more of my Tombow glue for that piece. So here I'm just stamping down a sentiment. This is treat yourself. And I stamped this down onto the background of the card and it kind of got lost in that background there. So I took some more of that vellum that I was working with earlier and this is actually the scalloped circle that I used to create those bite marks. I cut that out and stuck that down and then I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp directly over the top of my original sentiment just to help that pop off the background. Your ink can take quite a while to dry on top of vellum, so I find one of the easiest ways to heat set it is to apply some clear embossing um, powder, which is what I'm doing just out of the shot there. Just sprinkle that over the top and then use your heat gun to melt it and that will kind of seal in the ink and make sure that nothing can smudge. And so that is it for card number four. I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to the Rainier foiled paper. It's such an exciting product and I can't wait to see what you guys make with it. Do let me know in the comments below if you've heard of this before or if it's new to you. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have a giveaway for a $25 gift certificate. So make sure that you check out how to enter that. On screen right now are a couple more videos that I think you might enjoy. If you haven't already seen them, you can go ahead and click on the thumbnails or you can click on my logo to subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.